Can you manage Terraform Cloud with Terraform Cloud? You bet your sweet bippy you can, and in today's Terraform Tuesday video, we'll find out how. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. It's a beautiful Tuesday out there, and we are going to get into Terraform Cloud and how you can manage Terraform Cloud with Terraform Cloud. It's like Inception. Look out. So before we get into that, two quick things I just want to mention. Uh, number one, the Terraform Associate Certification Guide that I wrote with Aiden Ermey has been updated and published with a bunch of revisions around Terraform Cloud. I got some feedback that I hadn't gone deep enough on that objective, and so folks were having a little trouble on the exam. Well, good news, I just published my Getting Started with Terraform Cloud course on Pluralsight, and in the process, I learned a bunch, and that information is now in the, in the study guide. So if you already have the guide, you get the update for free, and if you don't have the study guide, well, the link's down in the description. The other thing I want to mention is that HashiTalks is happening this February 17th. If you don't know what HashiTalks is, it's an all-day event where HashiCorp just has continual presentations going. I think it's every half hour, basically, a new presentation starts. I will be presenting on what Terraform does with configuration drifts, so that should be interesting. But, you know, it's, a, it's an all-day thing, so tune in and check it out. If you miss it, I think all the recordings will be made available after the fact, but it could be fun to just participate in the live event. There'll be some chat going on, some discussion. Good times. Anyway, let's talk about managing Terraform Cloud with Terraform Cloud. Terraform Cloud is a service that's offered by HashiCorp. It's a managed service. And we're not gonna go through all the different bells and whistles that it has. We just need to focus on a few key things, starting with organizations. Organizations are like the top level management unit that everything else is contained inside of. So workspaces, teams, users, all that stuff sits inside of an organization. Now, if you have an account in Terraform Cloud, you can be a member of one or more organizations, but everything else sits inside of those organizations. Now, when you first get started with Terraform Cloud, you are either prompted to join an organization if you have an invitation, or you can create one on your own, and then everything else happens in the context of that workspace. So when you first get it started, you're probably gonna use the UI to do all this interaction, and if you only have three or four workspaces that you're managing inside an organization, it's not that bad, it's completely doable. But as your company, starts adopting Terraform Cloud more heavily, you're probably gonna end up with tens or maybe hundreds of workspaces in a single organization. You might end up with 20 or 30 teams with constantly changing memberships and different permissions on workspaces. You have to manage all of that. Guess what? The UI becomes a little unwieldy. So I thought there's gotta be a better way. There's gotta be another way to manage this. Automation is better after all, and what's my favorite kind of automation? Why it's using infrastructure as code. And it turns out, of course, there is a Terraform provider that's for both Terraform Enterprise and Terraform Cloud. It's the TFE provider. So you can use the provider to configure your Terraform Cloud organization. But where are you going to run that, that Terraform provider from, the configuration you build for your organization? Where are you gonna run that from? Where are you going to store that information? And how many organizations would you realistically have? Well, the first answer is you can run your configuration from Terraform Cloud. Whoa. So let's dive into that first. When I was thinking about how you might manage an organization via Terraform Cloud, my first thought was, oh, I'd create a workspace in my organization that configures the organization. But then I got worried that what if I added something that broke that workspace and now I can't manage my organization. That's, that's not a good move. So instead, what I thought makes the most sense is to have a configuration organization with workspaces for all the other organizations you want to manage. And that configuration organization would only have a few key members in it, only the people who are allowed to make any kind of direct changes to the organizations. And because workspaces are able to tie back into version control, you could have a version controlled repository that has the code and the configuration data for all the organizations you want to manage. And then when a change needs to come in, 
it will go through a GitOps style process where someone will create a feature branch for the change. Then they will create a pull request to merge that change into the main branch. And then once that change is accepted, then Terraform Cloud will go and apply that change to the target managed organization. So that was my, that was my big idea. Now that might sound a little bit confusing. So why don't we delve into the environment I have set up so you can see how it works in practice. Okay, here's the interface for Terraform Cloud. And currently I'm logged into the organization taco-co. This is my configuration organization, the organization I'm going to use to configure all my managed organizations. And I have a single workspace in here, and this workspace is responsible for managing the organization taco-org zero. This is the first one that we're managing. Let's go into that workspace and look at some of the settings that are configured there. Now, the first thing I want to take a look at is version control, because this is in fact tied to version control for the workflow. And it's pointing at a repository, ned1313 taco-co. So that is where it's going to look for its configuration. And it's also going to monitor it for changes. What is it monitoring? It's monitoring the path taco-org zero. So when a change happens in that directory, that's going to trigger a run on this workspace. Let's go take a look at that repository. I have it open right here. Sure enough, from the root of the repository, there is a directory called taco-org zero. And if we go in and look at that, we have a main.tf file, a variables.tf file, and configuration data. Now the main.tf file is actually using a module that I created. This is a publicly available module. It's on the Terraform registry. That's basically an org factory. The idea here is it can configure stuff about workspaces, teams, including membership, and teams access to those workspaces. Now, where does it get the configuration information? Ah, if we go back up, there's this JSON file called orgconfigdata.json. What the module does is it parses this JSON to load information about workspaces and teams, and then it uses the various resources in the TFE provider to configure the organization. Now, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because you can just look at the documentation on your own. I chose to go with JSON because it was a way to have all of the configuration data in one place. And you could potentially generate this from some other system that can create JSON. Okay, so going back to version control, it's looking at that directory. I also have automatic speculative plans turned on. What does that mean? It means right now it's monitoring the default branch, which is main. But if a change comes in on another branch and then a pull request is open to merge that branch into main, that's gonna automatically trigger a speculative plan so we can see what changes are going to be made if we accept that pull request. Once it's actually merged, then it will run and apply. And normally it would stop and wait to, for someone to approve it before it's applied. But because we're doing everything through source control, we can control permissions in source control over who can make commits and who can merge something to the main branch. And then in the settings, general settings for this workspace, we can enable auto apply for the apply method, meaning that if the plan is successful, it will automatically run the apply. Okay, so what does this look like in practice? Let's say I want to add a new user to my organization, taco-org zero. Let's go over to Visual Studio Code. And here is the current repository saved locally. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new branch here and I'll call it new user. There we go. And I'll go into the configuration data. And for one of the teams, let's say the org admins, I'm going to add another user here and we'll just call it, um, let's say uh, Julie, julie at example.com. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that change. And then I'm going to commit that change, new user, and sync the change up to GitHub. Okay, that's now been pushed up as a new branch in GitHub. So let's go back to the GitHub repository. And if we go and look at code, it's gonna let me know there's a new, you know, commit to a new branch. Do you wanna do a pull request against your main branch? Let's say we do. 
we want to commit this change. We want to potentially make this change in our destination org. So I'll create the pull request and we'll say add Julie to org admins. There we go. And create the pull request. Once I create the pull request, a speculative plan is going to run. So if we scroll down, we can see it's now running that speculative plan under the checks. If we click on details, it'll take us to Terraform Cloud and show us this run as it's running. So the plan is currently running and it tells us it's going to create two new resources. It's going to create a new org member. So that's the user account inside of Terraform Cloud. And it's going to add that org member to the org admins. Okay, this is a speculative plan. We can't actually apply it, but at least we know what changes it's going to make. And now someone who has permissions to merge this PR can decide whether or not to do it. Now, I have permissions to merge the pull request, so I'll go ahead and confirm the merge. What this is going to do is kick off a new run in our workspace. So if we go back to our workspace and look at runs, here's the merge pull request. And we can go in there and see it is running through the plan. Looks like the plan is about to complete. It's doing the same thing that it said in the speculative plan. And because we have auto apply running, it's automatically going to apply that change. The change is complete. If we go up and look in the taco org zero organization, we can go into settings and look at teams. There's the org admins team. And if we look at users who have been invited to join, julie at example.com is in there now. Now this isn't a real account, so she hasn't accepted to be a member of the organization. But now you can see that's how a change is pushed from source control all the way out to a managed organization. Now you might be wondering how you onboard a new organization. Let's talk about that now. Now let's say I want to onboard a new organization into this whole process. Well, the first thing that I would probably do is create the organization on the Terraform cloud side. And the reason for that is in order to manage teams, you need to be at a certain billing plan level, either teams or teams and governance. And if you just create an organization with the Terraform provider, it won't let you set that billing level. So then you can't manage teams. So the easiest thing to do is actually just create the organization in the UI first and then onboard it into your process. So I already have an org called Taco Org One. And if we look at the settings under planning and bill billing, I'm on the free trial, which means I get to use team management and all the other cool whiz bang features. Okay, now what would the next step be? All right, let's go over to Visual Studio Code and we're going to add this organization to onboard it. In Visual Studio Code, what I'm gonna do is first, I gotta get back to the main branch here. There we go. And I'll just do a git pull so my local branch is up to date with the remote branch. There we go. And now I'm gonna create a new branch and I'm going to call this uh, Taco Org One because that is what we're onboarding. And then I will create a new directory here. This is the directory we will track called Taco Org One. And I'll take these same files, copy them, and paste them into Taco Org One. So they're gonna have the same exact workspaces and teams for now, but we can always change that later. That's done, so I'll go ahead and commit that to source control and we'll call it Taco Org One. There we go. And I'll publish that branch up to GitHub. Going back to GitHub, I'm going to have to merge that change in so that that directory is available. So I'll go ahead and just create a blank pull request here and merge it to main. You know, obviously you would go through your standard pull request process, whatever that would look like. I'll confirm the merge. Okay, now this new directory is available for use. What comes next? We're gonna set up the workspace in our configuration organization for Taco Org One. So I'll create a new workspace and it's going to be a version control workflow. I'm going to use the GitHub version control provider I already set up, and I'm going to select the taco-co repository. There we go. The workspace name is going to be taco org one. And then we can configure some advanced options in here. The working directory is going to be taco org one, right? And we also wanted to enable speculative plans. That's everything, so we can go ahead and create the workspace. That workspace has now been created. 
What else do we want to do? Well, we can go into general settings here and enable that auto apply method. There we go. Let's save that setting. And then the last thing we need to do is set up some variables for this workspace. There's two variables we need to set. I'll click on add variable. And if we go over to Visual Studio Code again and take a look at the variables that we need to define, one is organization name. So what is the name of the organization we're going to manage? We know that's taco org one. There we go. I'll save that variable. And now we'll create a second variable here. And that variable is going to be config file path. So this is the path to the JSON file that we're going to be using. The path is the local directory and the value is org config data dot json so i'll go ahead and save that variable as well okay both those variables have been set i also created a variable set that has the environment variable tfe token this is the token that actually gives permissions to configure the organizations for terraform cloud and it's using a token i generated based off of my user account i'm an owner in all these organizations so i have permissions to make changes I used a variable set so I can make it available to all of the workspaces that are in the taco-co configuration organization. All right, so we have our variable sets set up. We have our VCS going. Now we can run a plan from here and I'll run start plan. There we go. That's triggered via the UI. And you kind of have to do this the very first time to onboard and then you can move over to the GitOps style thing. It tells us it's got 14 things to create. And because we did auto apply, it's automatically going to apply those configuration settings. So the apply is running. There we go. It's creating all the various things. And it's pretty fast because it's not actually spinning up resources per se. It's just configuring the organization. And now we can go over to taco org one and we see there's now a workspace created. We can go into the settings and teams and we should see all the teams are there. And if we go into maybe org admins, for instance, we can see the same users have been invited. So that's how you would onboard a new organization and then continue to manage it by updating the configuration data for whatever org you want to make changes on. In today's video, we saw how you can use Terraform Cloud to manage Terraform Cloud. And it's wild, right? Why would you do such a thing? Well, the first reason is because the UI can be kind of cumbersome. When you're getting started and you have three workspaces and one team, not a big deal. When your enterprise has deployed this widely, you've got a thousand workspaces and 20 teams, who look out, that's gonna be a little more difficult, rather do it with automation. It also means you have a workflow that has auditing built in and permissions and access built in. That's kind of nice. You can use the whole GitOps workflow to get things done. And when you're using automation, you know it's going to be done consistently and predictably. So all really good reasons to automate it. And why not automate it with Terraform Cloud? It's already there. And I'll let you in a little secret. If you do it right, that configuration organization can just stay on the free tier. You don't even have to pay for it. It's pretty it's pretty awesome, right? All right, that is going to do it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, hey, why not, why not give it a like? If you really enjoyed the video, you could subscribe or even share it with a friend. I don't know if that's the sort of thing that you're into. Uh, just want to reiterate, Hashi Talks is happening on February 17th. I have a talk and so do a bunch of other amazing people. There's a link down in the description. Definitely worth checking out. Even if you missed it, worth checking out the videos when they post them after the fact. Like I said, that's going to do it for me for today. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. <laughs> that's a really cool pin I got from HashiCorp. I really like it. I like the idea of pins. They're small, they can be flashy. I like the heft of the metal. But the thing is, I don't have anything that I would ever actually wanna put a pin on. So I actually have a whole bunch of pins that just hang around my desk because while I like the idea of the pin, I don't like the reality of it. Bye.